Kristen Anaya, and welcome to My Home Group TV. In this My Lifestyle episode, have you heard of tiny homes? They are popping up across the country, including here in Arizona. Tiny home communities have taken off in a number of states across the country the last few years. And while it's slow to explode in Arizona, one real estate expert says it's a trend that is likely here to stay. It's one of those trends that may result in being durable as opposed to fleeting. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is one is we're talking about fixed assets in, in many cases. But the other is these other problems that we are facing in terms of affordability aren't going to easily go away. And I think that the, the tiny home movement is continuing to deal with the affordability issue for a lot of people. As I, can, I can afford a really nice small place. I don't need a big place. And so there's a bunch of trade-offs that they're, they're making. And for that reason, I don't think it's going to go away. I don't think it's going to overtake. I think it's going to continue to be a niche uh, product type. Um, but I don't think it's going to just completely go away mm -hmm. either. Mike Partana is the owner and builder of Uncharted Tiny Homes in Phoenix. He says business is good, the interest is great, but financing is a big challenge for people right now. Everybody wants them. They're considered RVs on placement. So wherever an RV can go, these can go. The issue is, is the money. It's all cash right now. Financing is all personal loans. Until that comes to be, it's going to be slow going, but they're accepted pretty much everywhere. In addition to Arizona, you can also find uncharted tiny homes in Oregon, Colorado, Texas, and a lot in California. Mike says they just built and transported one to Hawaii. What kind of demographic are you seeing being attracted to the tiny homes? That is an easy one, everybody. Really? So we have first time home buyers, we have middle aged people that won't, don't want to be tied down, we have elderly. Young people he finds are especially excited about tiny homes. A lot of younger people are obsessed about these, but like I said, they just can't buy them just because of the money issue. Um, but if the money issue is corrected, I would say t at least 25% of the young population that is getting first time homes would like a tiny home instead. Mm -hmm. Just because it is smaller, it's easier to upkeep, keep it's no financing um, or very slim financing and it's all structured as personal loans. It's hard for first time home buyers to get an $80,000 loan just on them alone. They're not loaning the money on the tiny homes yet. Mm -hmm. So until that comes to be, communities aren't gonna pop up because investors aren't gonna get on board because it's a chain reaction. Mark agrees the difficulty in getting a loan for a tiny home is an obstacle one he doesn't see improving anytime soon. And lenders, I think rightfully are concerned about the resale value. What happens if they have to foreclose on mm -hmm. it? What do they do with it? Because yeah. now you're borrowing on personal property right not real property, right. because it's mobile, you, it's the collateral value isn't as high. And there's other laws in the state that deal with mobile homes and mobile home sales. There are a lot of institutional and regulatory problems, he says, that go along with it as well, which is limiting for the tiny home movement in states like Arizona. You have local jurisdictional issues as well. So you have entitlement issues in terms of density, uh, minimum square foot of uh, lot area for homes, um, whether they're single tracked or they're subdivisions. There's a number of issues that relate to individual jurisdictions which make it easier or harder for this kind of product to be developed mm -hmm. and, and sold. And so I think you have to look at it individually from a population standpoint, but also from a community standpoint, whether it's going to fit within their local um, regulatory framework, their zoning uh, subdivision ordinances. It's hard to pre-manufacture and deliver to a site a home because it doesn't fit within the current scheme. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that's also a barrier to the entry that you have on a mass yeah, basis. Where do you put it? Yeah, where do you put it? Right. Exactly. Partana says all his uncharted tiny home models are 100% street legal. It's a VIN number title, street legal. They're just built differently. They're eight and a half feet wide, 13, six tall, and up to 40 feet long. We stop at 30 feet because that's a comfortable tow, you know, so you can actually tow it by yourself, three quarter ton truck, just take it and go. We do custom, we do 10 feet wide, but you need special permits and escorts sometimes. Our range on our models is from 18 feet all the way up to 30 feet. From 150 square feet 
all the way up to I think 450 and that's all on our street legal models mm -hmm. and then we could just go crazy from there. So why would somebody want a tiny home versus an RV? I always just say quality. You know we build these as houses and they're custom homes but also the longevity. We build these identical to houses so any contractor or handyman that knows what they're doing can actually fix anything. You can get anything off the shelf at Lowe's or Home Depot, repaint just like your regular residential house. Okay. But you use it as an RV if you want. Well, I think the pros are you can get a quality home that uh, fits your lifestyle and it's more affordable. You know, the cons are it may be terrific right now and I worry about the overall resale value for people. So if you're gonna buy a tiny home um, and you're then going to either age out of it or you're going to change where you are in your lifestyle and you want to sell it, I wonder what the ultimate resale value is going to be of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that there's enough experience yet to tell us whether there's a good secondary market for them mm -hmm. and whether they make for a good business decision. Because what you don't want to do is buy something, they're not necessarily always cheap either mm -hmm. and then find out that you can't resell it or you have to resell it at substantially less than what you you bought it for or built it for. Partana says the tiny home is essentially a different type of RV and that he says will provide the tiny home movement longevity. RVs are here to stay this is just a different kind mm -hmm. just a different build quality of an RV and it's all custom so it definitely is here to stay and it's going to get easier and easier as soon as banks get on board and zoning. This is never going to be allowed to be placed as a house on a piece of property just because it's not. But there's going to be regulations changing where you can have properties that are structured like RV parks or little communities that can have a ton of tiny homes. That aspect will be perfectly fine. But as for buying a piece of property in Paradise Valley and plopping this down next to Larry Fitzgerald, it's not gonna work because mm -hmm. it's just not a house. Mm -hmm. And if people stop looking at it as a house, they're gonna be perfectly fine. As soon as the money thing's corrected, it's gonna blow up like crazy just because everybody could buy them, everybody could use them, and then investors can get involved because they can sell them. Mm -hmm. If you would like more information, you can contact Uncharted Tiny Homes at unchartedtinyhomes.com. And remember, you can subscribe to MHGTV, My Home Group TV, at mhgtv.com. And if you'd like to see any of our episodes, just go to our My Home Group YouTube channel and check them out, watch them, comment, like, and subscribe. I'm Catherine Anaya. Thanks for watching My Home Group TV. I'll see you next time.